here. So I wanted to review a multiplication strategy with you just in case you see it pop up and you need help with it. And it's the over strategy, or sometimes we can use it as the under strategy. And you'll see a, a cool connection here when we talk about the under strategy if you haven't already made that connection already. But in the over strategy, this is where we go over the number of groups by a little bit, and then we subtract um, the extra that we actually have. So if we were going to do the problem 98 times 12, we could really change 98 to be 100 because I see that it's only two groups away from being 100. And so let me give you like a real world scenario, very simple. Let's say I had 98 baskets and in each basket there are 12 eggs. Or let's even make this more real. Let's say a grocery store had 98 um, egg cartons and in each egg carton there were 12 eggs. Okay, so to figure out how many eggs the store had in all, we could actually make this into a friendlier number of 100. And we know that 100 is very simple to multiply because of the patterns of place value. When you multiply by 10, all the negatives are in one place to the left. So we can quickly mentally figure out 100 times 12. 100 times 12 is 1,200, right? But that's too much. We don't have 100 egg cartons at the store. We only have 98. So how many groups of egg cartons do we need to remove? We need to remove two um, egg cartons, right? So that we only have the 98. So the expression would look something like this. So we had 100 groups of 12, and then we're going to subtract two groups of 12. Because 100 minus the 2 is the 98 that we really did start with in the problem. So what's two groups of 12? That's 24. So now we have this mental math problem that we could probably solve in our head of 1200 minus 24. And if we're thinking about a number line and skipping back, what is 1200 minus 24? So if I'm at 1200 and let's say I skip back 10, that's 1190. Then skip back another 10, that's 1000. 180, and then skip back four more, that's 1,176. So my answer is 1,176. And that's using the over strategy. Now, when we talked about this in class, is it always efficient to always use, excuse me, always use the over strategy? Hopefully your answer is no. I mean, it's not always the most efficient. The only time that it's really efficient is if we have one of these factors that are really close to a friendly number, okay? So just keep that in mind that this is a great strategy, but maybe not for every single problem that you encounter, okay? Now, we also have the under strategy, okay? And that's when, like, you have a number that goes over a friendly number by a little bit, like I see 203. 200 is a very friendly number, so, like, if I take the three groups away, then that means I'm going to have to put them back in. So, if I go under, then I'm going to have to add two. Whereas over here, I went over, so then I had to remove some groups. So, it's kind of the opposite in terms of thinking. So, if I want to do this strategy, then I'm going to probably think about 15 times 200 first. Okay, 15 times 200. Let's say I have 203. Um, Easter's coming up. I have 203 Easter baskets, and each Easter basket has 15 eggs. How many eggs are there in all? So if I figure out how many eggs are in 200 baskets first, what's 200 times 15? Hopefully, you're starting to see where you can get another marker that you can think about the non-zero factors. 15 times 2 is what? 30. And then we have two powers of 10. So we're multiplying that by 100, so 3,000. Now, that is not all the baskets that we have. We actually have three more baskets. So now, since we were under, we need to add those three extra groups in, those three extra baskets. So I'm going to be multiplying 15 times three now. So what's 15 times three? Hopefully, with your use of time and, and things like that, that the number 15 is pretty easy for you to add up in your head or multiply. 
So 15 and 15 is 30, and another 15 is 45. So now we're adding 3,000 plus 45, and we get a total of 3,045 is our answer. Now, I've got a real good question for you. Does this particular strategy look like any other strategy that you have worked with? Does it resemble any other strategy? Think about some of the models we've used, like ratio tables or area models or things like that. Does this particular strategy look like any, anything that you could use in those models? Hopefully you're thinking really strongly about the area model since that is uh, what's pretty solid in your brains. So this is just a simple partial products when you because we're just breaking this factor apart into 200 plus 3. So really, that under strategy looks a lot like the area model where you, we didn't break 15 apart, but we did break 200, and we broke that 3 apart. And we found 15 times 200 is 3,000, and 15 times 3 is 45. And we put those together to get 3,045. So, um... We haven't practiced the under strategy as much because we've really been practicing it in other models. Um, but the over strategy, you know, I love the use of the over strategy when it's efficient. So always think about those numbers before you jump in, before you dive in. Think about what's going to be most efficient. So I hope you enjoyed that little mini lesson of the day, and I hope you're remembering those strategies.